the wonder of women, from their shoulders we do soar. The insides of humans have been passed down with objects, words, pictures, and sound. These insights are the coalescing of images, feelings, and experiences. They are not merely a strict repetition of what they represent, but offer a unique viewpoint. In the past, these insights of note have only been offered by men, but recently the world has become open to recognize the importance of women in the great story of humankind. This concert presents music and words by women that are sung by treble voices. Our overview begins with Hildegard von Bingen, around 1098 to 1179. Living in a time when women's place in society was restricted to being an appendage to a man and having children or entering a convent, Hildegard took the religious path. She represents the breadth of careers possible within a convent. Theologian, mystic, musician, composer, herbologist, visionary, dramatist, and administrator. On the slide, you see an icon of Hildegard with visions coming from her head as she is playing an instrument and counseling a colleague. Her monophonic music has been arranged by Katerina Gimmon, who wrote the final, also wrote the final piece of our program. This arrangement demonstrates some performance practices of her times. You will hear a constant drone of one to four voices and the single voice melody appearing alone and with other voices in parallel intervals. I play on the piano the opening melody. Venice was Barbara Strozzi's birthplace, and in 1619, the city was wealthy and enjoying a time of peace that allowed for great academic and musical achievements. Coming from a line of powerful Florentines, second only to the Medicis, poet Giulio Strozzi adopted orphaned Barbara and raised her as a true daughter. He was a member of several groups of intellectuals that developed and promoted the early versions of opera that combined theater and music in Venice. Its members included poets, philosophers, musicians, and authors, possibly including the opera composer Monteverdi. By 1634, Barbara was attending meetings and singing for the group. In 1637, Giulio founded another group, this one with the one specific goal of promoting her singing. Her performances raised eyebrows and inspired satires, since women were not invited to these groups. Barbara had a partner and birthed four children. These quotes defaming her include it is a fine thing to distribute the flowers after having already surrendered the fruit. Or, to claim and to be chaste are very different. All the same, I too consider her extremely chaste, since as a woman with a liberal upbringing, she could pass the time with some lover. Yet she nevertheless concentrates all her affection on a castrato. The most remarkable fact about Barbara Strozzi is 
that she published eight collections of her songs during her lifetime, more than any other composer. And she did this without the support of the church or the patronage of a nobleman. The two compositions that we will present are from those published editions. In Three Graces, speaking to Venus, Venus is encouraged by the Graces not to cover her beauty. However, they recognize that beauty is more enticing, more valued when it is withheld. Barbara's music is for three voices with continuum. It is in several sections organized by the text. You will notice two ways the music is presented. The text is either said all together by the voices, homophonically, or the text is said by voices at different times, contrapuntally. I will play the end which demonstrates these two textures. Francesca Caccini, 1587 to about 1630, received her early musical training from her famous father, Giulio Caccini. With his connection, she was able to perform in the Florentine court and concertized in Italy and France. Francesca married and widowed twice. She had a child with each husband after her second husband died, she returned to Florence, where she had the opportunity to produce musical entertainments with the leading artists and writers of the time. Soon she was considered a leading musician in the Medici court and received a salary that was second only to the Secretary of State. We are performing a piece from her most famous opera, The Liberation of Ruggiero, from the Isle of Achina, not based on a classical Greek myth, but rather on a contemporary subject. This opera is believed to be the first opera composed by a woman. In our piece, the nymphs of Alcina are enticing the shipwrecked Ruggiero to remain on Alcina. Alcina is a dangerous enchantress who turns every man who comes to her island into rocks or wild animals when she becomes bored with them. The piece begins with a haunting ritornello for recorders that is repeated two times between the choral sections. I will play the opening. Barbara Strozzi's Opus 5 is comprised of 14 sacred pieces for, for solo voice with texts from the Latin Vulgate Bible. These sacred pieces were perhaps Strozzi's attempting to reframe her public image. The volume appeared as her two daughters were entering the convent. Barbara dedicated the volume to Anna de Medici, Archduchess of Innsbruck, given as a recognition of Anna's devotion to music and religion. This gesture made a statement to the church hierarchy and the public about Strozzi's religious rebirth. Also the text chosen and the music written are expressions of religious fervor. We will hear examples of word painting with the music. 
And I begin, I'll play one that is, she circled the borders of heaven. Florence Price was classical, was a classical composer, pianist, organist, and music educator born in Little Rock. Her family moved north to Chicago in 1927. In 1933, her first symphony was performed by the Chicago Symphony. She was the first woman to have her music performed by a major orchestra in the United States. Adoration shows her compositional skills and begins with a tender melody. Eleanor Daly is a composer of choral music, a church choir director, a choral clinician, and an accompanist living in Toronto, Ontario. We move up in time to the 18th and 19th centuries, when women occasionally pushed the boundaries of their society. Jane Austen, her sister Cassandra Austen, and her mother, Mrs. George Austen, played a parlor game where they devised poems with stanzas that ended in a word rhyming with the word rose. Here is the result of their game. Jane creates a scene of a bachelor farmer going to church. Sister Cassandra has a beautiful atmospheric philosophical setting and descri that describes love. And finally, Mrs. George recites the to-do list of her typical day with a few whimsical asides. In our next piece by jo Joan Shimko, who is an outstanding music educator, composer, and conductor, who was born in Chicago, educated at the University of Illinois Urbana, and worked in Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. The poet for this piece is Joe Harjo, who was the 23rd Poet Laureate of the United States and the first Native American to hold that position. She was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she is a member of the Muskegee Nation. She graduated from the University of New Mexico and the University of Iowa. The eagle is a prominent feature of this poem. I will play a portion of the piece as you watch the eagle flying. Thank you.
next piece is by Abby Bettinas, graduate who graduated from St. Olaf College and the University of Minnesota and is currently living in Minneapolis. This piece musically describes the process of peacemaking. It begins with a very serene chant and then moves into a contrapuntal, joyful exploration of the compromise and collaboration of peacemaking. Eleanor Roosevelt, niece of Theodore Roosevelt and wife of Franklin Roosevelt, was an orphan and in 1894 was sent to Allenswood Academy in Wimbledon, London. The headmistress there firmly believed in teaching her young women independent thinking. Eleanor flourished in this environment. She became fluent in French and gain in self-confidence. Shy Eleanor became the wife of a future president of the United States, mother of six children, and redefined the role of first lady. This text, The Beauty of Your Dreams, was adapted from her words. One of the most poignant lines in this particular piece is you must do the things you think you cannot do. And Joan sets this with a very, very pithy melody. Finally, the piece ends up with Believe in Your Dreams, in the Beauty of Your Dreams. The composer of the chant that is used in this piece is by Stacy Howes, a Miquam woman and a member of the Mihawkuket First Nation. Stacy is a member of Eastern Owl, a locally and nationally known group of women who blend the styles of First Nations drum music and contemporary folk to create their own innovative sound. Three verses follow, spoken by the same woman at different stages of life. A shy young girl, a lost and angry youth, and an older woman. Kim Baluk has set these to a very simple melody.
Janet Jackson's text began in response to the deaths of Philando Castile in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And she made this response on Facebook. The text begins, what would we do if we didn't have the privilege of being distracted? The moment is already passing, already distracted from this fire, though the smoke is still filling our lungs. We see this phenomenon daily in the news. As one tragedy after another is reported, how can we comprehend that news as we seek any distraction? Can we have the patience and courage to face the problem and develop a responsible action? Can we become expert at revolution? Can we figure out a responsible action that could lead to positive change? Dale Trumbuller, a Los Angeles composer and writer, has been awarded many composition awards. Educated at the University of Maryland and the University of Southern California, she says this marvelous statement with music for the piano that aptly supports the feeling of the words and music of the ensemble. The piece begins with the question, what would we do? And the reply occurs later in the second half of the piece. This is going to sound wrong, but I hope this pain lasts. I hope that it holds. I don't want to heal. Katerina Ginnon lists her influences to range from Ukrainian folk music of her heritage to indie rock. She has degrees from Canadian universities, including the University of British Columbia. This composition divides into three sections. In the first section, we'll hear voice percussion. And you'll notice this in the alto part. And the altos are singing this particular. Very, very percussive. And the wonderful melody is introduced. Uh, we have an aleatoric part in the middle uh, in which the melody of the piece is introduced. With an aleatoric repetition of I am a dreamer. Then the piece ends up with a wonderful com combining of these, uh, the, this tune that goes up and then comes down, and you'll hear it like this. So that's with all together, we are love, ends our program. Thank you so much. This program is made possible in part with the grant support from the New Mexico Humanities Council. Thank you.